Hello again, boys and girls. I'm back, and again, I'm talking about team management uh, guidelines for advisors and team managers and team leaders and for both the amateur and the FSA student teams. So I have talked about putting a positive spin on things, and you should always try to do that whenever possible. However, the reality is there's some things we should never ever do. That's the left hand side. And then we have the right hand side positive, left hand side negative. They have to balance one another. And it's not really a true balance, and I'll tell you why. The things that you do right do not help as much as the things you get wrong hurt your effort. The things you do wrong hurt your effort more than the things you do right help. You're going to find that out. So here's some things. Don't, don't, don't. Don't, don't, don't do these ten things. First and foremost, this will slow down, crash and burn an effort because race teams have irrevocable deadlines. The race will start with you, it will start without you, it will start. Here's the number one problem with race teams, especially FSA teams. Don't have team members standing around needing directions. That means you have made a 100% failure as managers if you have even one person standing around the shop lost because the honest thing about young students and beginners, a lot of them are afraid to make a mistake. They need to know that what they're doing, someone is sort of thought about it and because they just aren't self-starters or whatever, they won't dive in, they need something laid out for them to do. And besides, if you just let the whole team self-start, you're going to have duplication of effort in one place, you're going to have no effort in another. You have to manage this thing and you have to put in the effort to manage this. If you're a team manager, manage. Don't get down there and fabricate until after things are properly managed. Don't have team members standing around needing directions. Number one principle. Number two, running out of cash, having a cash flow problem will slow down an effort quicker than anything else. Don't order expensive parts unless you're 100% sure they will match up with the rest of the components on the car. I have shelves down there, shelves in our storerooms with brake calipers that won't go inside the wheels. I have master cylinders that won't generate enough pressure to stop the car properly. We have a steering wheel that's too large or too small or not rules compliant. It just goes on and on and on. Why? Because the, it's your people that are ordering things must do the due diligence to check that that's what actually will match up with the other components of the car. Number three, don't believe delivery dates for parts and services. Services meaning water jet cutting, plasma cutting, laser cutting, coatings, whatever. Don't believe delivery dates have a plan B. Now, of course, you should not waste financial resources. And if you can find a part you need that's $25 cheaper, let's say halfway across the country, even including shipping, than a part you can drive 40 miles to and buy directly, paying full retail, hmm, well, I obviously have time, I should order the part and save the money. However, Make it clear with the salespeople. I need this by such and such date. If I do not get it, I'm canceling the order. I'm getting in my car. I'm going and buying the retail part. That's your plan B. Always have a part available elsewhere. If you're sending engine parts off or chassis parts off for plating or cutting or whatever, you better have more raw material, more whatever, so in case that stuff doesn't get done and get back to you in time. Don't treat the rule book as your enemy. 
I see teams do this all the time. They're trying to work around the rules, work around the rules. No, no, no. The rules are your friend, not your enemy. Don't treat them as your enemy. The rule book defines boundaries. Without the rule book, there are too many options. Engineers need to refine the options down to a few where you can make a good selection. Having infinite options is not a good thing. All right. Don't pull all-nighters as a matter of course. Students especially are horrible about this. They're using, I'm telling you right now, you're going to see this. They want to put it off. Well, I got to study for this. Oh, I got to go to this ball game. Oh, my girlfriend's complaining. I don't spend enough time with her. I'll make it up on the weekend. I'll make it up right before the event. We'll go in, we'll pull up all nighters like we're studying for a midterm or a final and it'll be okay. No, it will not. Do not pull all nighters. Don't think you can finish or work things out unresolved on the car at the event. Oh well, all we have to do is put in a fuel tank and run some fuel hose and wire up the pump. That's all we gotta do. We can do that at the event. I don't want to squander what time I got left. We'll just do that at, no, 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 no. If it's not working properly at your home base, it's a hundred times harder to get it working there. And you have no resources at the track unless you bring them with you. Don't ignore personality friction within the team. As team leaders, you're going to have egos. Egos are going to get bruised, feelings are going to get hurt, people are going to start hating one another at times. Do not just ignore it and hope it sort of works itself out. Leaders, by definition, step in, separate, and do what's necessary immediately. That's the definition of a leader. If you don't think so, watch the Nature Channel and watch how a wolf pack works sometimes. Okay? Now. Don't go for extremes in design. Trying to do the lightest, trying to do the this, the that, the other, especially if this is your first time out, your beginner is a big mistake. What you want to go for is reliability. Be conservative. I'm not saying don't try to do an excellent job, but if you go for the all-out lightest vehicle, many, many, many teams, especially in FSAE and professional racing, by trying to save so much weight out of a vehicle, have made them totally unreliable. They get halfway through things and then wheels snap off, chassis crack, wells break, carbon fiber, fiber tubs split. It's not a good thing. Don't go for extremes unless you know exactly what you're doing and are experienced at it. And on the same vein, getting on the chat, don't tune for all out peak horsepower numbers. Circle track, road racing, drag strip, FSAE, torque, torque, torque is acceleration. Horsepower is speed. Tune for peak horsepower number if you're going to Bonneville or if you're going to Indianapolis, not if you're going to autocross, do a road race, run a circle track. You need hard driving torque off the corners. That will net you more performance and lower lap times than anything else. And lastly, number 10, don't go for an aero package without first running the numbers of the cost benefit. In fact, perfect place to end this, why aren't you running the numbers on everything? What is it with student mechanical engineers that don't want to run numbers? You have been trained in your academic programs that math is your right arm. Run the numbers. That's what you're good at. I have, t at times, I, I think I could have taken a feral tomcat and stuffed him in a bucket of water barehanded and giving him a bath easier than I can get a mechanical senior engineer to sit down and run a few simple numbers. It's just you resist it. I don't know why. You're going to see that they resist running numbers. They'd rather, it's more fun to build, it's more fun to drive. I don't want to sit down and run numbers. Make them run the numbers. That's what engineering is all about. 
If you're not running the numbers, you're not really doing engineering properly. And that's it.